Hey everyone, it's Ollie from the Java Hub, and I'm finally back with more tutorials. And I'm sorry I haven't released one in so long, it's just been so busy with all schoolwork and other such business um, that I've literally been, I had no time at all to do any tutorials, but I'm good now, and hopefully I'll be releasing one or two every week. So, welcome to this new series called Intermediate Game Developing. Uh, in Java, and the reason I call it intermediate now is because we're going to be moving away from the sort of very basics of creating sort of a small game to actually going into creating a proper game that would function well and peop it's basically it would be playable. It would have replayability, it'd be professional, uh, it would work well, it would look good, all that jazz. So we're going to be looking into more complex game logic, such as we're getting rid of the repaint method because that caused the problems previously, such as with the um, painting of tiles on a map. We can eliminate that problem completely by just um, manually repainting the canvas, and it sounds difficult, but it's actually not. So yeah, let's just begin right now. I have two classes here, one called main and one called game panel. There's nothing in game panel yet just this one method called log where we can uh, basically system out print line and in main it just extends JFrame, you've seen this all before if you haven't seen it before I suggest you watch my uh, beginners Java tutorials um, yeah so we've uh, in the constructor I set the size default close operation all that and then I just create a new instance of it and when I press run you can see I have a window here. And before we begin, I just want to show you something that we're going to be working towards. Uh, this is a game I made uh, quite quickly. Um, it's just kind of like a 2D Minecraft thing. And as you can see, I have my character walking about. I ignore the red squares, they were just for uh, collision detection and testing. And I have three things up here, unarmed pickaxe pistol. I haven't really programmed any visual representation of those, but if we press 2 to go to pickaxe, um, as you can see the blocks are highlighted when you move your mouse over them, and only the ones in your radius are, and you can just click them and destroy them, and your guy will fall down, as you can see. And this is just like a really simple game in terms of what we're going to be doing, because the kind of engine and basis we're going to be making is going to make this sort of thing really easy and really possible. Uh, so let's quit this, make this my main project again and let's begin so we've made our JFrame here, if we press run pops up uh, so what we're actually going to be doing is the JFrame is not going to contain our graphics and animations what's going to contain it is something called a J panel which as you can see I've imported up here and we can say right now that our game panel is going to extend the J panel and basically all of our stuff is going to be printed and displayed on the J panel and then that J panel is going to be put inside the J frame. The reason we do this is because it allows greater functionality of adding different things to our game such as we could add a menu bar and we can add uh, swing buttons as well uh, because we can choose where to place the J panel on the screen as opposed to taking up the entire screen with uh, just the JFrame painting canvas. So anyway, let's get started. Um, first things first, we're going to create um, some variables. Uh, we're going to be cr we're going to create our double buffering variables first of all. Double buffering. I'm going to leave lots of comments about um, double buffering in case you don't know. Um, just il eliminates flickering basically and graphics glitches with your game and I explain it in my beginners tutorial, it's the third beginners tutorial I'll probably put a link in the description uh, so we have a private image called double buffer image and then we can have a private graphics called double buffer graphics and we'll be working with those later on but for now we can just leave them there uh, now we can create two more variables, we can call them um, J panel variables variables and these can be private or actually not private because I know we're going to need to use them later we can say static final integers we can call them g width for game width 
that can equal 500, and game height equals uh, 400. And then we can say static final dimension equals new. Oh wait, we need to give it a main a name first. Um, game dim equals new dimension, and that will take g width and g height as parameters. Um, now that's done, we can make a new thingy saying game variables. And this will be things like we have we'll have a thread, private thread called game, and then also a private static volatile oh wait, not static, sorry. Volatile Boolean called running, and this is gonna say whether the game is running or not. And initially this can equal false because it's not going to be running at the very start. Um, and what volatile means, in case you don't know, is it stops the boolean from being copied into um, the method's local memory, and that prevents any misreads from any of the methods, because um, as you'll see later on, the methods will, we're programming, if the running accidentally switched between true or false, it could make a big difference and cause our game to completely crash. So now that that's out of the way, um, we can go ahead and make a constructor for this. We can say public game panel. And we can straight away add some built in jpanel methods. We can have set preferred size. And then we can add our dimension in there, game dim. That's the reason I created a dimension, is that the set preferred size method only takes a dimension as a parameter, not two integers. Um, you could alternately in here say new dimension and then put g width, g height, whatever. But um, it's just easier to do that. Um, we can set the background color. Let's see, I don't want to get the method name wrong. Set background um, to white. And by the way, this is a question that confused me and I didn't really understand. If we, I don't, I didn't know why there was um, different variables for white, such as white in capital letters, and then white in lowercase letters, and they did exactly the same thing. So I, if you hold control and click on it, it actually takes you to where it's located. And as you can see, we have the color white equals new color with the RGB value, and then the next line it says color white in capitals equals white. So they are just ex completely exactly the same thing. So, yeah, I found that out recently. I didn't really know what the difference was. But, yeah, just in case you were wondering, there you go. Um, we're now going to say uh, set focusable, because obviously we want our J panel to be focusable so we can do so the key events will respond to the J panel. Uh, what I mean by that, for example, if I click out of this window now and type, nothing happens because it's not. Um, focused on the window. We want to be able to focus on the J panel so it can receive key events and inputs and etc. And if we, if it's focusable, we can request focus from its parent, which will be the J panel, the J frame rather later on. And we can do that now actually. Um, we can say game panel GP, and we'll initialize it in our constructor new game panel, and then we can say down here we can say add GP. There we go, we've added our J panel to our uh, we've added our game panel to our J frame. So now that that's done, we can add we can make some new methods. And this can be we're gonna make a private void start game. And start game is going to initialize this thread and it's gonna set running to true. So first of all we'll check if they're not already set to to true or running. So um, if game is equal to null or not running, then we can say game equals a new thread. Thread takes this as a parameter, and we can say game dot start. And then we can say if I spell thread right, thread. And also we need to implement runnable. There we go. 
and then we can say running equals true. Nice. Let's just now. Wait, I'm thinking. Let's do it. Let's do it here. Public void run. And then now we can put here whilst running. And then we can do all of our stuff there. So that's set up nicely for us now. So we've got our start game method right here. And now we're just going to make stop game. Um, public stop game. If you're wondering why I'm doing start game as private and stop game as public, is because we're going to be calling stop game from our main class over here later on, but we only ever call start game once, and that is, um, we'll do that in just a second after we program stop game. And stop game is simply going to say if the game is running, then running equals false. Simple as that. Um, now we'll add that method I just told said we would. Uh, it's called add notify. It's a built-in method to the J panel. Notify, and it simply notifies the J frame that it has arrived and it is present on the screen, and it wants to be used and do stuff. So we can call to the superclass, which in this case is um, the J panel. So we've basically we're overriding the add notify method, and then we can do that method in if that makes sense. Let me let me think of a better way to explain it. For now, just copy what I do, and then we can start the game. So basically, when we add the game panel to the J frame, it's going to automatically call add notify, and then so it. Because we've overridden this, because we've written it ourselves, because we we want to call start game within it, we run this, and then we say, oh, but also do all the default stuff you would normally do, and then it says, all right, we'll do that, and then we can start the game. So, blah, 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 that's that. Um, what else have we got to do? What else have we got to do? Uh, let's set up now a key event handler. We can say add key listener, and this is going to be for later use. And we can literally just say new key adapter. I find this much neater than making new classes within classes. Um, we can say public void key pressed key event e, and we can copy that, paste it twice. key released and key typed and we can override all of these so now these are ready to handle key events all in all key input from user there we go now that that's done um so now we now we're ready to handle key events from the user Actually, let me check my time. And I'm already at like 12 minutes. So I'm going to end this tutorial here, guys. So thanks for watching. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Just kind of easing our way back into this. We're, it's looking nice and neat so far. We're building a nice sort of sturdy game running engine. Uh, next tutorial will be pro.